What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. A Bad Blood is back, and like the original show, this one has a wild Hell in a Cell match booked. However, that's just the beginning as the WWE have four other matches scheduled, all with the potential for serious mayhem. Join us now as we look at all the winners and losers for Bad Blood 2024. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. And we first start off with the Women's World Championship match as Dominic Mysterio is suspended in a shark cage over the ring as champion Liv Morgan takes on Rhea Ripley. And has Liv Morgan's luck finally run out? Morgan has managed to keep the title thanks to help from Dominic Mysterio, but with Dirty Dom trapped in a shark cage, things look good for Rhea who has dominated Morgan in every meeting thus far. And still, wrestling fans know that while stipulation matches can allow babyfaces to get a level playing field, they only sometimes create that illusion. Although Dirty Dom will be trapped in the cage, he's one of wrestling's craftiest heels, and you can be sure he'll have something planned to help live out. Whether it works or backfires will determine the match's outcome, as Morgan, while capable, can't withstand Ripley's fury without assistance. Look for Dominic's help to backfire, leaving Morgan on her own as Rhea Ripley finishes her own revenge tour, beating Morgan senseless and regaining the championship she never lost in the first place. Our final prediction, Rhea Ripley wins at the Women's World Championship. Now this match should end the Liv vs Rhea feud, opening the door for new programs for both women. Or who could they be? Check out our rumors video for that. Next up is Damian Priest vs Finn Balor. The Judgment Day has been a boon for both Priest and Balor as Damian finally got the chance to prove he belongs in the main event and Balor reminded fans why he's once considered one of wrestling's best. Both superstars have been elevated by their time in the Judgment Day including Priest winning the World Heavyweight Championship and their feud is the next step in this development. So far, Priest has shown he's an entertaining badass babyface, while Balor has taken his heel game to new lows, as seen by him betraying Priest. This match should be pure dynamite as Priest is thirsty for revenge while Balor has a chip on his shoulder. Even though this is an undercard match, it could steal the show in terms of match quality, especially since both superstars have to work within the restrictions of a normal match. Expect interference from Balor's allies in the Judgment Day, but even this won't be enough to cage Priest's fury as he had some payback on the man who stabbed him in the back. Our final prediction, Damian Priest defeats Finn Balor. Now unless Damian and Finn's match turns into a dud, which seems very unlikely given their skills, there's plenty of gas left in this feud. While the WWE may move it down to weekly television, there's still room for more matches, including at least one stipulation match that takes advantage of the red hot heat between them. It's also possible they will find room at Crown Jewel for a stipulation match to end the feud. Next up is the WWE Women's Championship match as champion Nia Jax takes on Bayley. Now, this match has much going on besides the bout itself, but as we'll see, not so much that it should distract from the contest itself. Here, Bailey is looking to regain the title she dropped to Jax at SummerSlam, with Miss Money in the Bank Tiffany Stratton arguably distracting Bailey just enough for Jax to get her momentum back. This is a massive match for the champion and the challenger. In Jax's case, it's a chance to shut down critics who are still upset with the WWE's decision to push her over younger talent, given Nia's past reputation for sloppy in ring work, although not everyone agrees with this assessment. Jax has improved from her last run in the WWE and a solid performance against Bayley will lend more support to the case that Nia can work against different styles of opponents. Furthermore, a solid showing against Bayley will show Jax can work different types of matches against the same opponent, which is essential for a champion. As for Bayley, wrestling's role model has been in a rut since she won the title at WrestleMania, and while the rut for Bayley is better than many wrestlers' peak performance, she made it clear in interviews that she was disappointed with her performance at SummerSlam. Bailey is going into this to remind fans why she continues to find ways to freshen up her act and provide some of wrestling's most entertaining matches. Add to the intrigue other subplots of Tiffany Stratton and Naomi. Ms. Money in the Bank wants to cash in her briefcase, however she also wants to avoid Nia Jax destroying her, so it'll be fascinating to see whether Stratton can scheme her way into a cash-in without incurring Jax's wrath. Regarding Naomi, a heel turn is coming, but it won't happen overnight. Instead, look for Naomi to involve herself in the Jax vs. Bailey match, planting another seed for her heel turn. But fans may be in for another surprise during or after the match, and we elaborated more on that in our rumors video. While Bailey is certain to dazzle the fans, she won't be walking out with the women's title, as something outside the ring will lead her to taking her eye off Nia Jax for a moment, allowing Jax to retain. Our final prediction, Nia Jax retains the women's championship. Next up is the Hell in a Cell match between Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. The first Bad Blood introduced the Hell in a Cell match, and while there's something ironic in the WWE bringing their show back and featuring a Hell in a Cell match in it, the real story is McIntyre and Punk's feud. 
This program is unusual in that it was already on the way to becoming the feud of the year before either superstar had their first match. Now it says a lot when two wrestlers can build up and sustain a feud through promos and angles, especially when one of those wrestlers is injured. But thankfully, Drew and Punk's two matches have more than delivered, with Drew stealing a win in their first match and Punk scoring a decisive win in the second, only for McIntyre to make it clear things weren't over. As short of a loser leaves the WWE match, this is the best way to finish the feud as the Hell in a Cell still has regained its reputation as one of the WWE's most dangerous matches. Uh, particularly due to Finn Balor and Edge's Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania 39 uh, where Balor was busted right open. WWE is hyping up this match as it could end one or both men's careers, so it'll be interesting to see how the WWE has one or both men sell the after effects of the match. Both wrestlers have something to gain from winning the third match in the series and little to lose by counting the lights. Here CM Punk is a better candidate to win because he needs the win for whatever big programs the WWE has for him the next year. This is including a possible series against Seth Rollins. A Drew McIntyre can deal with a loss as he's repeatedly shown he can bounce back from losses and he scored a third world title earlier this year, adding that to his resume. This Hell in a Cell match could prove so brutal it makes WrestleMania 39's Edge vs Balor contest look like a tuxedo match by comparison. A look for Punk to run the ultimate gut check and score a win over McIntyre as our final prediction, CM Punk defeats Drew McIntyre in the Hell in a Cell. And finally, it's time for the main event, as undisputed WWE Champion Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns take on the bloodline of Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu with Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. Now, this is a classic case of fans getting to see two enemies team up to form a truce to deal with an even bigger threat. While Cody and Roman have distinct reasons for wanting revenge on the bloodline, this promises to be an instant classic as the WWE's two biggest megastars join forces. But can they coexist? Well, as cliched as the WWE has run similar storylines, this one seems genuine given Cody and Roman's extended war. But this match is just the start for Roman's war with the bloodline as he'll have to deal with outside interference as well as the possibility of Hikuleo showing up and possibly helping his family, that being Tamatonga and Tongaloa. Added the potential for Roman to bring in allies of his own and this match has plenty of intrigue. Although Cody and Roman may not like each other, they're both professionals and Roman will show that he's a man of honor by living up to his promise to have Cody's back, yet another way to solidify Roman's face turn. But that won't stop Roman from challenging Cody to a rematch for the undisputed title, possibly as early as Crown Jewel, but this one will be all about Cody and Roman getting a measure of revenge on Solo and company, but far from enough to end this feud. Our final prediction, Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns defeat the Bloodline. But there you have it folks, I will look at all the winners and losers of 2024's Bad Blood PLE. What are your guys' predictions? Let us know in the comments down below, I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.